So we have the plan for today's talk. Uh, first, I'm going to um, talk about two motivating questions for this talk. For this talk, and I'll give you an overview of the conceptual message, which I found uh, interesting. And uh, then I'll go in detail talk about three uh, topics. So first is uh, finding an equivalent condition for generalization. I will talk about my work with Roy Chow and also some follow up work. And then I'll talk about uh, getting super fast randomization for randomized algorithm. And, and then finally, I will talk a bit about getting super fast randomization for randomized food system. So let's get started. So uh, let, let's briefly recall the setup. So randomization basically is the process of converting a randomized procedure algorithm into an equivalent deterministic algorithm. And of course, you want this conversion to a as minimum overhead as possible. And uh, in complexity terms, a uh, well-known, a famous question uh, is that whether BPP or problem solvable in probabilistic polynomial time is equivalent to P, which means problem solvable in deterministic polynomial time. And of course, we can also talk about proof systems, which are very useful in crypto and, uh, and other stuff. So randomized proof systems are uh, uh, are very, very useful in the practice, but the deterministic proof system captures energy. And the randomized proof system, they are like merging after or after merging. So the, the, the natural question is asked, can you de-randomize, can you convert any randomized proof system into an equivalent deterministic proof system? Or equivalently, is AM equivalent to MP? So here I think part of the AM only has constant wrong because otherwise you can do more things than it. So uh, the two motivating questions for this talk are as follows. The first question is, uh, what is the minimum assumption needed for generalization? So we know that second level bounds implies generalization, which is from a well-known uh, line of work. But then we do not know the convert. And also, of course, we would love to have unconditional generalization, but that seems very hard currently. So, but at least we can ask, what can we minimize the assumption? Which is a very intriguing question. And the second question is, we are asking today is, how fast can generalization possibly be? Uh, this is, of course, an even more natural question because uh, of course, we want, want the dimension to be as fast as possible. But is there any limit uh, to, to this uh, fast generalization? Can we prove any matching lower bound, upper bound to, to show what exactly is the, is the frontier? So that's the, that's the question. So in this talk, by introducing a new framework for generalization, which goes beyond traditional to the random generators, we make, we make progress on both questions. And uh, I will also talk about some follow-up work, which makes further progress, and I found it super interesting. So uh, let's talk more, a bit more on this first question. So, we'll, so in this talk, I will use P and a DPP, but I, what I really mean is promise P and a promise DPP. If you don't know what promise DPP is, then it's okay. Just think about that random time. So, what we really want, ideally, we would uh, want to find an assumption X that is equivalent to uh, generalization. Because then, for any other assumption Y, if Y also implies generalization, then clearly, because X is equivalent to generalization, Y also implies X. So, formally, X is going to be mathematically weaker or not, not, not more powerful than any other assumption that has implied generalization. 
So, in this sense, it's the weakest assumption for generalization, and we will we want to have a natural, interesting assumption of X that is equivalent to generalization. So, in this work, we uh, gave a new generalization framework based on new uniform hardness assumption. So we give a new type of uniform hardness assumption that is both necessary and sufficient for generalization. So there's a caveat here that in all cases, in my setup with Roy cell, we did not achieve a full equivalent. But there are some follow-ups which did achieve some interesting equivalent. And I will talk about them briefly later in the talk. So roughly, we fully we have uh, we have formulated some new uniform assumptions which have two way connections between them and generalization. And I believe studying them will give us more insight into generalization. And uh, now let's take a look at uh, the second. Oh, by the way, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, now I should take a look at, at, the, at the second question How fast can generalization possibly be? So we can try to formulate this question in different ways. For example, uh, one way is that let's say t is any reasonable time bound, let's say linear time or n squared, for example. For every reasonable time bound t, what is the smallest t tilde, which can be a bit larger, such that randomized t of n time is contained in deterministic t of n time. Or we can ask for uh, other money t of n times contained in non deterministic t tilde t tilde n time. So, so this way we want a generalization that works on every input because this containment means that for every randomized algorithm that a Smith algorithm which correctly computes the randomized algorithm on every input. So as a quick spoiler. Uh, on the plausible assumption, we can show that t tilde n is actually t, roughly t n times n. So that's an overhead, which is uh, the n here is the input length. So the generalization, the worst case generalization overhead is roughly a factor of the input length. So this is very interesting if you are thinking about a uh, slower algorithm, like if the algorithm has running time put to the epsilon n or uh, quasi polynomial, then a factor of n is basically nothing. But if uh, a linear time algorithm, then it's a quadratic blow up. So, so that's not very good. And the, in the second setting, we try to relax the our problem a bit further. So, can we do better by getting slightly weaker generalization? And the, because previously, on the plausible assumption, you can show the overhead of n is actually required. So, based on our new generation framework, uh, it's more flexible and it actually enables extremely fast generalization. So, we show that for some new uniform assumptions, we can get a, a result essentially says randomness is indistinguishable from useless. What it means is that. Uh, the limit is that for every t of n time randomized algorithm, you can find a deterministic algorithm which is which runs in roughly the same time, but it's very hard to find a counter example a counter example that the deterministic algorithm makes mistake. So the deterministic algorithm has an overhead of n to the little o one and could and could make mistake on some potential input. But it's very hard to find such an input. By polynomial time algorithm. So it means for polynomial time anniversary, it looks correct because it cannot find a wrong input quickly. And uh, we also get uh, a similar thing for constant run Kelvin time after learning protocols. Uh, that is, they are effectively non deterministic Kelvin time with uh, some polynomial overhead. Uh, this is a bit more technical, and I will talk about that later. Okay, so so 
So what's the new framework I have been talking about? Uh, what's the difference between this new framework and the previous work, previous approaches? So you may you may be familiar with the, the concept of pseudo random generator. So it's called PRG. So you have a generator G, and uh, you cut you output a list of of uh, random string R1 to Rm. And uh, the hope is that the the output of G fools every small circuit C in the sense that uh, the the uniform distribution over all the R's is uh, indistinguishable from a random and a truly uniform distribution. The, the important point here is that G does not depend on the input circuit C. Okay, the formal definition of full, of full small circuit. And uh, we try to work with a different concept called targeted PRG, where it's introduced by GoldenRive uh, 10 years ago, a decade ago. So now, we, the generator actually depends on the input circuit C it wants to fool. It's a only the only, the only requirement is that for every C, the G look at C first and then produce some in, to the random input as full C. So it's called targeted because now you see the input circuit and the only wants to pull your targeted, your, your target. So, uh, at first glance, the same targeted PRG makes sense because uh, not knowing the circuit you want to for seems that this advantage and clearly seeing the circuit might help. And it, essentially, the whole framework is trying to materialize this intuition that knowing the circuit should help. And then let's uh, take a quick look on the uh, what's our new assumption. So essentially, we are we are saying that uh, that exists an efficient function f with multiple output bits, so f can be making n bits from n bits. That is hard for n to the c time probabilistic algorithm. Uh, what that efficient means and what that hard means will depend on context. Uh, okay, so we just finished the motivating question and uh, the overview. If any questions or not? Okay, so I'll, I'll keep going. So recall, so recall that we want to show P equals CPT or promise P equals promise CPT. And uh, the traditional traditional approach starts with that circuit lower bound, like uh, exponential time does not have sub exponential time circuit. And uh, such Okay, lower bounds are equivalent to uh, PRGs with uh, not all organ leader. Such PRG implies generalization. But uh, it's not clear or it's an answer any open question whether generalization actually implies PRG. Uh, so, so potentially PRGs uh, or okay, lower bounds are just too strong because it's not clear whether they are necessary for generalization. So on the other hand, people also look at uniform lower bound. Lower bound like exponential time is not equal to randomized time, randomized for another time. So this is a much weaker assumption and uh, you can show it's actually equivalent to PRG that works on average. But uh, such PRG is too weak for generalization. Probably they, they, they don't imply stuff like uh, P equals CPT. They only imply like a uh, promise P is uh, uh, in is in average case P, for example. Like you can randomize randomize algorithm with high probability over uniform input or over polynomial time sampleable input. So so it's not clear. So this, those assumptions seem too weak because. Because uniform assumption only implies uh, 
uh, average customization. So, of course, these two lines of work are amazing. They, are, they have lots of ideas, and all people are pretty on the They They do not seem to give you like a equivalent uh, between assumptions and generalization. So, we, we try to propose a new generalization framework based on targeted GRG. And uh, so, all, all, all approach is to stand for a new type of hardness assumption and show that they imply generalization and that they are implied by generalization. Uh, any questions uh, regarding the discussion? And, uh, okay. So in this work, we propose a new type of assumption called almost all input hardness. So roughly speaking, we are assuming something like this: that exists that exists a function mapping MD from MD. That is almost all input hard against all n to the 10 time randomized algorithms. So what does almost all input hard mean? It means that for every n to the 10 time randomized algorithm A and for all but a finitely many input X, A fails to compute X. So this is a very strong assumption. It says that for every Randomized algorithm. Uh, it can only compute F over. Uh, any question? Uh, okay. So you need a very strong assumption that says that uh, for every six or another time randomized algorithm, it can, it can only compute F correctly with probability more than two thirds over finitely many inputs. So, Pass some input length, A fails to compute on uh, computer F on every input. Uh, did you ask anything? I cannot hear you. Uh, I want if the function okay. A just run them somehow, oh, sorry, just maybe fix, uh, fix all because for each A, uh, there are two to the n possible input. So with a good power, one of them is correct. Then there will be infinitely many x that this a can guess correctly, isn't it? Uh, uh, so what do you mean? Like a is guessing, so on every x, a simply output a random output? Yeah, I mean a is a deterministic function, but a so random... A is a, a is a randomized uh, function. Yeah. F is deterministic. Yeah, uh, uh, but I choose a to be deterministic. Sure, sure, sure. But I choose uh, it to be a randomly chosen deterministic function. Uh, how, what does a uh, randomly chosen deterministic function mean? Uh, I mean, there are so many functions, I just choose the random, op random one. Um, but the A is like, but the, but the A is like, you mean, you mean A or F? A. The A is the uniform algorithm. There are only like the uh, countably many uniform algorithms. Okay. So you're not going to see. So yeah, it's important that the A is uniform. If A is like a uh, circuit, right, then it, it probably does not work. Good, gotcha. Uh, okay, if A is circuit, then it maybe it still works, but then it's not as interesting because it has to get over. Okay, so. Okay, this may, this may sound pretty, pretty strong, but uh, you can prove that if P equals DPP, then it is true. And uh, 
the proof is actually very simple because uh, your p equals b p means you have generalization that every uniform algorithm A can be derandomized. Then this F can just do some diagonalization. For every input X, it enumerates like a first log N program and try to output something else. So because, and also uh, it's not very important that this, so the proof, everything still works if you, you are matching N bits to like N to the 1,000 bits. And in that case, it's much harder to get correct. So I have been mean, on matching n bits to n bits to just for simplicity, but you can think about it as matching n bits to any polynomial bit. That's also, that's also okay. That is much harder to get correctly. That is, makes sense. So, uh, but anyway, so this assumption is actually implied by, uh, by generalization. So it's, so we have a small twist on the, um, on the, on which input it has to be hard. Now it has to be hard on all inputs. But it's only against uniform algorithm. And it's implied by generalization. So, uh, the main result of this paper is that the previous assumption of this, of, of that, of the paper, uh, of that paper is that, that, is that if we add one more condition to the hard function in this assumption, then it implies generalization. So let me try to pass it for you. So first we still assume f is from n bits to n bits, or f is from n bits to like n to the 100 bits, that's also okay. Uh, that is, so we, now we uh, force that F is computable by polynomial size block space uniform circuit of 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 n squared depth. So a block space uniform circuit of size t, I mean that that exists a uniform block t space algorithm that prints the description of the circuit. And uh, it's uh, not hard to show that every polynomial type every n to the k time algorithm have an n to the k size log space uniform circuit. So having log space uniform circuit must really a constraint. The constraint is on the depth. So now the depth has to be n squared. So as the, so the, the circuit can be very, very large, like n to the 1000 width. So the depth has to be like a big polynomial. It's not like a, it's not like a super parallelizable function, but it has to be six polynomial time parallelizable in some sense. So if, they, if, if we have such a hard function that is almost all input hard against usual n to a 10 time randomized algorithm, then we have generalization. So this, uh, red tag is the caveat of all uh, the proposed. Of course, the n to the 2 and n to the 10, they are not important. You can replace them by anything with the uh, gap of 5, I guess. So, so, from this, we know that if we still use facing this almost all input hardness, uh, with one condition on the one mouth condition on the hard function, then we can derive generalization. Uh, any questions? Because this is actually very important. So, so the so essentially we, we show that uh, this uh, almost all input hardness assumption with one uh, with one additional 
the structure constraint on the hat function implies germination, and germination implies uh, almost all input hat is uh, uh, usual almost all, almost almost all, all input hat is without the restriction on the hat function. So essentially, this type of Hughes assumption is sufficient and necessary for generalization. And that's uh, any question? Yeah, I'll pause for five minutes, five seconds. Okay. So, so since this work that some very interesting follow up work by by uh, Leo and Pat. Uh, yeah, you know, and the uh, rap rap path. So uh, I'm not going to uh, carefully define what they prove because uh, uh, time is limited. But roughly speaking, they actually give you some four equivalents. The previous uh, all result for shut down five equivalents because today so they first show that in that first paper appearing this year, CCC, they show that a certain almost all condition hardness assumption for the Gap conditional time bounded homomorphic complexity problem is actually equivalent to generalization. Uh, yeah, I, I don't have time to fully define what this, what the, the, the problem is. It's very interesting that like a very well studied problem in meta complexity, and they show that a certain variant of this problem, uh, if you and also if you uh, assume something called almost all condition hardness is actually equivalent to generalization. But still, this, still you, you, people may argue this is a specific problem and we want hardness condition for every problem. And in their second work, second work they show that uh, uh, if, you, if we do, do not consider usual hardness, we consider something called leakage hardness, which is some interesting concept in crypto. And then, uh, Something called uh, that you also combine leakage hardness together with almost all input condition. Then almost all input leakage hardness for any multi output function in P is equivalent to generalization. This is pretty cool, uh, but the, the paper is not public, so but that's a, a top video online in the uh, in that workshop. Uh, talk. So if you are interested in that paper, you can take a look there. So essentially, they they change the hardness uh, condition to, to something else, and they show that something else is actually equivalent to generalization. And uh, that's also a follow up work by Dravitsky and uh, Van Melkenberg. Mel so they so they, they, they try to consider the question of who uh, I think. The same question, but for a m equals m t. Uh, so previously, we are trying to find an equivalent Hannes assumption for for promise p equals promise b t. But now they think about uh, a m and m t. So they are able to uh, follow our uh, technique and uh, formulate an almost all input Hannes assumption that came close to characterize a m equals m t. So they also have some gaps, but uh, um, uh, the, yeah, that result is actually technical, but I don't have time to to discuss this, but that is very interesting for us on um, the similar question for AM equals MT, and the that talk video is also uh, public at the workshop. Okay, but still I think the, the, that's still an open question as to whether we can get a full equivalent only with the almost all input hardness, but do not and put the uh, almost all input hardness without the leakage condition. Uh, for me, the leakage hardness uh, equivalent is, is very interesting, but it, I feel like it's less natural than a usual hardness, hardness assumption. So leakage hardness is well is well studied in crypto, but it's probably not that well studied in complexity theory. So it, it would be nice to see if we can uh, get, remove the leakage condition. And this also may have some other application to many other problems in generalization because 
uh, almost all input hardness is the, is the usual hardness assumption you think about. Something else uh, on the super fast generalization for randomized algorithm. So the classical line of work uh, assume strong shows that if you assume strong circuit level bound, you can get randomization with polynomial overhead. Uh, such polynomial overhead randomization already implies p equals. DPP, which is great, but uh, also the overhead, uh, the exponent in the polynomial is not very small, it's uh, not very practical. So a quick calculation shows that uh, the IW97 proof probably give you at least seven or something. Probably even, probably actually probably eight. But at least seven, so it's not very practical. And the recently that very interesting work, interesting work. So starting by uh, Dora, Moskowitz, O, and Zuckerman, they they, show, they prove that assuming uh, two to the n times is hard for non-uniform learning other protocols, you get a quadratic generalization. So this is uh, very interesting. Uh, because now you have improved the exponent from at least seven to only two here, and the quadratic is much closer to being practical. Uh, but still, the question is when when you can get uh, what's the right answer? What's the right? What's the uh, fastest generation? Can we improve its quadratic to maybe almost linear time? So. Uh, yeah, recent work we also managed to assume something different because getting the same quadratic overhead. So let's see. I'm just showing it up because it's a somewhat different assumption. But later in a uh in a, in a, in a 2021 paper with uh, Roy Tell, we show that if you assume first one one way function exists and second Two to the k n time is not in two to the one minus epsilon k n time with two to the one minus epsilon and b sub otherwise. Then we can actually de randomize t of n time with that overhead of n. So, okay, so maybe I should say a bit more on the assumption. The first assumption is one way function exists, which is a pretty standard crypto assumption. The second one is saying that. You cannot speed up two to the k n time, even even with like a nearly maximal bit of advice, which can be seen as that strengthening of usual circuit lower bound, which is says you cannot speed up two to the n time by like two to the epsilon n bit of advice. So now it seems that a scale is a possible assumption and it's consistent with all intuition that uh, uh, nearly maximum bit of advice should not help you to do uh, the needs computation. The one-way function you this can be replaced by another weird assumption, which I'm not going to repeat here, but it's incomparable to one-way function. So, so now if we assume either one-way function you can this or the button assumption you can this and the 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 k n on the right, then we have the overhead n generalization. Uh, so this dividing line here means the uh, so so it's or it's, so, so so we have three assumptions: the, the the left two assumption and the right assumption. The any of the left two assumption holds. Plus the right assumption hold gives you a generation of overhead of n. Uh, so, so uh, 
the, the, the next question is what, what about this overhead of N? Can we completely get rid of it or can we, or it's actually inherent? So actually it's inherent. Is that uh, uh, something called uh, shaft and step? I'm not going to define it. It, is, it means it's a counting version of non deterministic strong exponential time hypothesis. Uh, it, it's quite it's, it's, it's quite possible, and it, uh, this assumption implies that the generalization overhead of n is optimal. So it's not clear uh, how can we get further improvement if we believe in this assumption. So, so, so now it seems we have a barrier for even faster generalization. Can we? Can, can we? Uh, Get yes, better generalization with no overhead. Uh, hello, DJ. Can I ask one question? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Uh, so back to this page. Uh, I just wonder, like, is the second result uh, uh, also uses? Uh, does the second result also use like black box PRG or 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 like uh, uh, or the PRG like yours? Like, it depends on the uh, algorithm. Oh, so uh, I'm sorry, I didn't say it. So. So every generalization in this page, they're all black box. They're, they're all just PRG. Uh, I mean, like, but, but your, uh, sorry, but uh, I saw that like, your result, like, so your PRG depends on the algorithm, right? Uh, yes, but uh, so currently I'm only talking about some previous work. So I'm okay. talking about my new generalization on next slide. And uh, yes, and that's a reason why we cannot do for that generalization. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks for the question. So, okay, how to overcome? So, oh, so how to overcome this NSDTH barrier? Uh, so, so we can try to. Uh, so that's a lesson from crypto, which says that if two things are indistinguishable by polynomial time algorithm then they are practically the same. So maybe we don't have to get a generalization which always works. We only want, want it to work. We only want generalization to look correct. And the, what does it mean by look correct? So can we show when it is indistinguishable from user? So I'll go here and do, do something like this. For every TRN time randomized algorithm, we want to find a deterministic Algorithm C sub L that that depend on this uh, algorithm such that for every polynomial time sampleable distribution, the probability of L of, of this the new algorithm C making a mistake is uh, is uh, negligible. Uh, so so what does it mean? It means that so think about the, this sampleable distribution as actually an adversary with trying to find some bad input. Now essentially it says that no efficient adversary can break our generalization by finding a mistake. And it's crucial that this adversary is uh, uniform. Because if it's not uniform, then you actually can hardwire a bad input. Then it becomes work case generalization. And we cannot get anything. So it's important that this adversary is uh, uniform. Then we can hope to get better results. So I will write it as randomized TLN time is being effective TLN time times n to the uh, one overhead. So so this is our definition of effective randomization. I think it makes sense because uh, it's very hard to find a common example. So, okay, of course the question is, can we uh, achieve such a generalization? We are able to do that with a, uh, with a very strong hardness assumption. But, uh, we are only starting this line of work, so we hope this future work can minimize this assumption. So, first we assume one, one function exists, uh, which is quite standard. And then we assume that exists a function f from m b to n to the epsilon b. Epsilon is something very small. Such that, first, uh, for every x and the i, the i speed of f of x can be compared.
computed in just n time. So it says that uh, each bit of f is uh, computable in just n time. So the top, so computing the whole output of f requires just just n time n to f goes time. And second, f is hard to approximately print by just n times much less than n to f goes time randomized algorithm over all polynomial time sensible distribution. Okay, what, what do I mean by the second condition? I mean that, oh, but first, if, the, if these two conditions hold, then we have effective generalization with an overhead of n to the O epsilon. You can make epsilon very, very small, actually close to, to one, then you have the polynomial generalization overhead. So what do I mean by hard to approximately print with respect to our distribution D? I mean that for every uh, just n times n to epsilon over 10 times randomized algorithm, and for every x from with, with so, so, so for every, uh, not for every, so if you sample x for the distribution d, the probability ax, and the probability that ax is close to f of x is very small. So in, in other words, the part with, with very high probability ax is, uh, is going to be incorrect on most of, on many, a constant fraction of the, of the output. Oh, sorry, uh, let me go back. So, so what I mean, so we're saying that, so first, uh, each output this output f is calculable in just n time, and it has n to the epsilon up to the b. So spending n to the epsilon times just n time, you can compute the, the whole the whole function f. And we are saying that if you spend less time, if you spend less time, like uh, if you spend less time, like n to the epsilon over 10 times just n time, then you cannot, uh, Approximate even approximate the the output because in because in such running time you can only compute like n to the epsilon over ten bits of the output and for other other bits you can only get so essentially we are trying to say that this function is non batch computable in the sense that you cannot spend significantly smaller time to compute a majority of the output. And uh, and so, so essentially, this distribution D is the same distribution in generalization. So if this, so I'm seeing it as like a overall polynomial time sampleable distribution. So if the highest condition holds for one distribution, then the generalization holds for one one distribution. And if the highest holds for all polynomial time sampleable distribution, then generalization holds for all polynomial time sampleable distribution. So that's a very smooth trade-off between the power, uh, between the strength of the assumption and the generation you get. Uh, I believe it, I believe the assumption should, uh, should be true. For example, you can instantiate f by some uh, hash function. Then it's, in, then it's in very hard to break. Okay, any questions? Okay, so let me talk a little bit more about why we have to, why we need a new framework for such a thing. So essentially, we can show that if we only use uh, PRG or any black box generalization method in the sense that you only like evaluate your circuit without knowing the, you only have black, black box access to the circuit you want, you want to randomize, then no such thing can prove just n times being effective just n times like n to 0 0.99 times. So essentially, it's very easy to, it's because we want to hold over all polynomial time sampleable distribution, which means that the sampler can potentially run the PRG to figure out what your student relative and construct a better input for you. Your target, your PRG, PRG fix, uh, the output first and then try to pull the circuit. 
so so the sampler can the adversary can try to look at the to do out to do random output and uh, to construct some bad input. That's that's uh, doable for most natural problems. So if you target the PID, uh, you cannot do this because the the to do random output actually depends on the input. So so you cannot like uh, get get to know the to do random output in advance. So that's why we really need a, like a new framework for doing non-black box randomization to get such a, such a, such a thing. And uh, I think that this area is really not deployed and uh, that should be much possibility for future work. Okay, let's look at the open problem. So first of all, can we find some other possible assumptions that imply the current generalization overhead A is optimal? Or can we find a better generalization and then refute and, uh, this and that? Uh, both are very exciting possibilities. And also, can we further weaken the assumption for the overhead and generalization? So, so, so now we need to assume one way function. Uh, which is usually not the uh, ideal assumption in generalization. And that's a paper, uh, it's actually 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, paper. So that, that, that paper by Chatea and Viola, they provide some black box area regarding this question. But maybe we can do something non black box or something very fancy. I don't know. Finally, uh, can we weaken the highest assumption required for the free launch generalization? Oh, by the way, how much minutes, how, how much time do I, do I have? Maybe uh, I should stop. Five minutes. Okay, five minutes. Uh, okay, I, um, okay, let, let's, uh, uh, I'll try to get the first part uh, at least. So, so, so now let's move to uh, de-randomizing proof systems. So we are thinking about after learning proof systems uh, because after learning is more interesting than learning after. And the classical work give us presentable time generalization, but unfortunately they also have a very big overhead. Like uh, I didn't calculate them, but they do not give you like a quadratic or cubic. So uh, in a new paper with Roy Tell, we show that under some strong assumption which I don't have time to go over with. But essentially we are assuming some highest condition highest again learning after learning, so three rounds learning after assumption. We can de randomize uh, after learning kill and after learning time with an overhead of N. So which is similar to or which is the same overhead in the case of randomizing randomized algorithm. And secondly we also show that uh, so, for any constant round C, the randomization of as of C round as the merging is uh, of n to the cell cell C over two times n, and also under the assumption n set, all these randomizations are are tight for for every for every round number. So. We, we know that the, the that are collapsing theorem showing that constant run AM is equal to AM, but that collapsing gives you some overhead. And we are, here we are saying that in some sense that overhead is high. And, and very high. So, and also it's very interesting because you can show under N set, under the same assumption, the randomizing learning after requires a quadratic overhead for all t. So somehow after learning is actually easier to de-randomize than learning after. Although people although usually people believe learning after is, is weaker than after learning. So again again we have a barrier for faster generalization because uh, of this unsaid con conjecture uh, or hypothesis. So uh, I'm going to be a I did it quicker now. So again, we try to do generalization not with respect to every 
input for the like uh, on average over upper number time separable distribution. And we are and we instantiate a study of deterministic effective argument system, which is uh, uh, which is similar than NP, but now we only require the 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 standard to hold for uh, over polynomial time sampleable distribution. Uh, and the polynomial time adversary, of course. So essentially we show that uh, constant round asset modeling can be derandomized into non deterministic uh, argument, uh, effective argument with essentially no overhead. Uh, assuming some very, very strong assumption, which I don't have time to go over with. So this is very interesting because it's just no, almost no overhead regardless of the number of rounds. So we actually did something very similar to Fire Shamir in the, in the proof. We, we, we tried to apply targeted PRG to the current transcript to reduce the randomness and also the interaction. But I don't have time to go over it the details. Uh, okay, I, I think I don't have time to let them okay. So, again, the open question will be, can we further weaken the assumption for the overhead and generalization of the asset money in Kelvin, Kelvin time? So, so we, show, we, show, we show it with a very strong assumption. And uh, I think that this is not the optimal assumption. That should be, it should be possible to improve that assumption further. But uh, again, this is pretty new. It's like a, it's, we, we ask this question ourselves and we answer it. So that, oh, I, I'm saying that we managed to get such an overhead and generation only this year for the first time. So I think that relatively new and that should be a uh, new way to weaken the assumption and get something better. Yeah, thanks so much. Uh, that's the end of my talk. Uh, any questions?